All right, what's your name, sir? Ryan Stark. And who do you represent? I'm president of Blackstone Laboratories. All right, well, I know about Blackstone Laboratories, but a lot of our viewers may not know what Blackstone Laboratory is and what you guys do here. So could you kind of give them a, you know, a short, brief, you know, explanation of what you guys do over at Blackstone Laboratories? Sure. We test oils, so people send us oil samples, uh, used oil from their engines or industrial equipment. We can analyze it, see what type of metals are present, see what type of contamination might be present. And from that, we can tell them how their engine looks. If they've got a problem, we'll let them know that. If, it, if everything looks good, we'll let them know that as well. Okay, so that's basically what an oil analysis is. Um, so let's dive into it. What is in the process of doing an actual oil analysis? Okay. Well, first, uh, once the, when the sample arrives, we unpack it and uh, get it in, the, in a run to be uh, tested in the lab. Uh, when the lab gets it, they do four different tests on the oil. Uh, on every oil we do, it's called our standard analysis. And that includes a spectral examination where we look at uh, 20 different elements that are present in the oil. We do a, a viscosity on the oil that tells us how thick an oil is. We do a flashpoint on the oil that tells us about volatility. And we also do uh, insolubles test, which is basically total solids in the oil by volume. And from those four tests, we can, we can tell you virtually everything you need to know about what's going on in your engine. Okay. Okay, that sounds great. So, um, what all types of oil can you, is it only oil so you only deal with engines or how does that work? Oh, no, we, pretty much any type of oil you have, we can test. All types of differential oils, transmissions, gear lubes, uh, hydraulic systems, um, pretty much anything out there that's got oil in it, we can analyze it and we have. Okay, so like let's let's dive into that, cause our, cause there's a lot of people that's gonna say, okay, wait, a differential, or you know, like a transmission. Let's let's kind of use some examples of that. So let's just say uh, I bring in a truck I'm about to buy, and I say, hey, this is the trans or this is the trans fluid, and this is the uh, engine oil, and I pull the differential fluid, and let's just say it's an all-out limit. Let's just say the truck is a piece of crap, and I bring it to you. What would you guys test and like, give me kind of an example of how that would work. How would you, you know, what would you find in each one of those samples? So what we have is we've got averages on our reports. So we kind of know what the engine or what kind of metals and, uh, and oil should be making before we see it. And so we'll say, compare the, what shows up in your sample with what our averages have in it and kind of get an idea of what's normal or not. If there's a lot of metal in there, uh, something like that could be an indication of a problem. We also would see things like antifreeze contamination. If you've got a real bad head gasket or, or problem along those lines, we can see that with a couple elements that show up in the spectral exam. Uh, we test uh, fuel dilution. We look for fuel dilution, which can be from a, something like a bad injector. We use the flashpoint test to tell us about that. So when, when excess fuel gets in the oil, it'll lower the flash point and then we tell by how low the flash point is how much fuel is present or not so a little bit of fuel might be okay but if you've got a lot of fuel something like a bad fuel injector bad fuel pump those are pretty common issues that can can cause that uh, and fuel will lower the viscosity too so if you know you're running a 5w40 or a 1540 uh, when we test the oil, it should look like that, and if it doesn't, it can mean there's maybe some fuel in there as well, or, or something else is going on. Okay, uh, so like let's let's do the transmission more. Like let's see, like okay, what would you test for in the transmission? So like what would what would be some of the concerns that you can catch early with the transmission? This for you know, and y'all do semi truck transmissions too, right? Yes. Yep. Okay, so I'm I need to check mine i haven't done that one before so let's just say i uh the next time i'm at the shop i say hey get some of the uh fluid out of my transmission and i bring it well we're not gonna say mine someone else brings it and what type of problems would are you it's more common to find more know, common to find on transmissions it would be uh, uh excess wear if you've got some parts that aren't wearing correctly in there or maybe a you know if you've got clutching that's not um and it's getting worn out. We can see that type of metal shows up in the oil. Again, we've got averages, so we kind of know what the transmission should look like. 
Um, so we'll compare the sample to averages, but we also look for, we'll look for things like water contamination. Uh, dirt's another thing that could possibly show up. Uh, we read uh, the dirt with the element silicon in the oil. So that's uh, something that we would look at, as well as looking for viscosities. So, you know, some people not, aren't sure exactly what type of fluid should go into a transmission. So if they send us the used stuff, we can tell them exactly what was in there and what they should be replacing it with. Okay, and last one, last one, and I swear we're going to move on. Differential. So mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think I, I need to be got on about this because I know for a fact when I go to like the TAs or something like that, they, they, uh, they'll top off your differential fluid, They're just, uh, if I'm not mistaken. They'll top off, that's like your rear end, right? The differential. Mm -hmm. yep. So yeah. So they'll top that off and they'll fill it with the with the fluid or the oil. And I never thought about just, hey, pump some of that out, throw it into this container, let me test it out. So what could you catch prematurely from the differentials? Usually the they all make a lot of metal, so the um it wouldn't be unusual to see a lot of metal in those and isn't necessarily a problem either because they can make they can produce a lot of metal and still be normal. But contamination's a big thing. Uh, depending on, you know, sometimes if you have to back down a dock and you, uh, you know, have to get into some water or something like that, if you get contamination in your fluid, we can see that and that would be an indication that you need to change it. Or maybe there's a seal, the bad differential seal that covers it. Uh, that would be something that could need to be changed. And dirt, water and dirt contamination are both two things that are fairly common in those that we look for. So that will help you a lot with preventative maintenance. So you, you catch the contaminant, you catch like it may be a crack and you're getting a lot of dirt and oil in there and it could um, it makes it, the parts wear a lot faster, you'll lose a lot more lifetime out of it. So mm -hmm. you guys, I, I think that, so what would you say, this is the last, okay, let me, let me uh, ask this one. What would you say, how often should you test your, um, your differentials versus your uh, transmission versus your engine how often should because i'm about to get on this schedule like whatever okay. you say is what i'm about to start implementing with my trucks okay um for engines you know if they're running good um you can do it every oil change uh, i would suggest every oil change until you get a trend going once you've got a trend going you know how it looks then you can go once a year is probably the minimum uh, that you would want to do uh, transmissions and differentials those are really overall they're typically problem free so you can do those um, you know maybe check them once every year every other year something like that they don't need to be necessarily checked on a super regular basis just because again they're not too problematic most of the time but uh, every now and then it wouldn't be a bad idea to check those you know i would say probably differentials you could check those once every two or three years and be fine uh, and transmissions once every year, every other year would be okay on those too. Okay. All right. Now I've done the reports before. So what is TBN? TBN is a, is an extra test that we do uh, over and above what our standard analysis includes. And that stands for total base number and it's done on engine oil. So when an engine's new, they start out with a high TBN, they start out with high total base number and that that's a measure of how much additive is present in the oil to start with. So as the oil gets, you put it into the engine, as it gets used, the TBN drops, and that can tell you how much active additive is being present in the oil and how much is left. So as the oil gets used, the TBN drops, and when it drops to a certain point, that means your oil's basically out of active additive and should probably be changed at that point. Okay, and we we basically we've already kind of discussed, but just for the viewers to understand, just so you know, everybody, are these truck tests? Are these tests? just for semi trucks no no we do a lot of semi trucks and but we do everything we do cars um, uh, airplanes <laughs> you name it there's anything out there motorcycles so, yeah motorcycles exactly boats, boats. yeah uh, yep, yep okay okay and, so guys if you're out there fishing you i'm telling you <laughs> bring hey check that oil check that oil 
Um, so we already went through when should you get your fluids tested. Well, well, what do you say? When should you get your fluids tested? What's up? Dial 911, call us immediately, get this shipped in, hurry up type situation. You should just test. Well, that's, you know, something if you think, if you ever think you have a problem, if you notice that you're losing coolant or if you hear a knocking sound, things like that, those are type of things that you want to test sooner rather than later. Uh, everything else, you know, if the engine's running normally, again, you can probably get by once a year. It is nice to know how it's looking when it's normal. So that's what our trends do on our report. So we'll, we'll show you the past historical data from your engine. And so you can compare not your current sample, not only to our averages, but the trends. And then that tells you how everything's looking over time. So at least once a year though, is usually a pretty good indication on that, a pretty good time. Okay, I see you got a somewhat of an example report mm -hmm. right there. Um, yep. I wanted to kind of give the consumer how do the how does the reports come out, and how does the consume how will the consumer be able to understand the reports? So our reports basically they go out by email. We can't send hard copies, but most people have an email, and so they'll get this as a PDF file, and it's got a, uh, it's laid out to be pretty easy to read. You'll have your customer information, name and address up here, the type of vehicle that you're sampling, and engine. Um, your current report will be here on the on the left side and then the historical samples will be to the right as you go along. Universal averages are, are here on the far right column. So that's what you would look at and compare your current sample to uh, how everybody else's engine looks. We've also got uh, physical tests on the oil, physical properties or it would be down here, viscosity and flash point. So this would be your current sample. We tell you here, we give a range. If we know the oil, we give a range of what it should be. So we'll have a viscosity range, and if yours is out, we'll talk about that. Um, so the historical samples for physical properties are down here, but the comment section is really what our customers mostly like. That's where we go through and just try to explain in plain English exactly what we're seeing. Uh, we don't expect, because we work with the general public, we don't expect them to know exactly what you know, elements like phosphorus mean or, or high iron or what's too high. So we go through and try to explain here in the comments. If everything looks good, we'll let you know. If, it think, if we think you might have a problem, we'll let you know that too. If it's a bad enough problem, we'll usually get on the phone and give you a call. So. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Cause like, um, you guys, you guys helped me with an engine uh, from a Volvo. You guys was able to tell me like, hey, that engine's on its way out. Uh, and and it was it was pretty simple to read. It was like pretty much in layman's terms, like it's looking that this has excessive wear, blah blah blah, this this and this. And yeah, in that paragraph, it tells you everything you need to know. And I like to add that you can always call in. For my mm -hmm. any time that I didn't understand nothing, I just called in. Hello. Yeah, I didn't understand that last part. What do you mean by it doesn't have the right consistency to it or it's more liquidated or whatever terminology they use. If I didn't understand it, uh, hello? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they, oh, well, it just means that it, it's it got a little bit more water to it or whatnot. So I can say that I've experienced that and it was a breeze. It was a breeze. Right. Yeah, we try to make it easy. Uh, yeah, phone calls, emails too. If you have questions on email you, or uh, on your report, you can just respond to the email or reply to the email. Okay, how accurate are the reports? Uh, by themselves, the, the numbers, the, the spectral examinations are really accurate. These, are, these levels are in parts per million, and they're probably plus or minus on the wear metals, you're probably looking at plus or minus one or two parts per million on those. Uh, the, some of the additive elements, which would be down towards the bottom of the element list, those can have a little bit more variation, maybe plus or minus 10%. But, Overall, the reports in, in, are generally extremely accurate, and that's just a function of the machine that we run them on. The uh, spectrometer that we use can read down in the parts per billion. Uh, they test for lead, things like lead in drinking water, uh, water uh, wastewater treatment plants, things like that. We'll have these machines, to, so they can really get down small. And uh, but, but they're very accurate machines. They'll, they'll, if you're seeing it in the oil, you can be sure it's there and uh, you know there's some reason for it. So there's, there's no, uh, sometimes some mysteries as to why things show up, but you know for sure that's in there. So it's, it's really pretty accurate machine. Okay.
That's perfect. Do you guys have a program or a package that you offer to the public? Sure. So our, our basic analysis, this, this report right here is $30, and that's if you just pay as you go. But we do have a bulk package, whereas if you buy, if this is something you're going to be doing quite a few samples of, you can buy six kits, and that gives the price, or gets the price down to $27 each. Uh, we also have uh, discount prices if you buy 50 kits in advance or 100 kits in advance. So depending on how many you do, uh, if you buy them in advance, you get a discount on those. So. Now this won't be my favorite part because I got this thing and I've used my son bought him a car and I'm like super dad now. Everybody knows me for my pump. I've went to the truck auction and they be like, oh, there go the pump guy. Like, <laughs> I, I swear to God, I live by this thing. Like, if, if, if you compared it to a religious person, I would say this is my car and truck Bible. I swear. <laughs> would you please show and introduce to the viewers what an uh, 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 oil pump is. That's sure. what I call an oil pump. I'm not okay. sure if that's the exact name for it, but that's what I call yeah, it. We call them pump. sample pumps. But sample pump, okay. Yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a, uh, basically a reusable pump. We sell these. These are $35 on the website, and uh, they're, they're pretty neat. They allow you to get a sample from the dipstick, so from the dipstick tube, so you don't have to change the oil to get a sample. So in our sample bottle, you have this is the bottle that you actually put the sample in. And you can get the oil sample when you're changing oil. If you drop the drain plug and put it under there and fill it up, that works fine. But the pump works good, especially if you're, you're dealing with a situation where you're not sure if you want to buy the vehicle or not. You take the, the tubing, you put it in here just a, just a little ways in. It might be kind of hard to see, but it doesn't have to go in very far. Tighten the knob. And what the pump does is it actually just creates a vacuum in this bottle. So that, that side's ready to go. You send this side down the dipstick tube. You draw it a couple times. It, it creates a vacuum. Oh. So, and then that vacuum draws the oil right up the dipstick tube. When it's about, oh, a two thirds to a three quarters of the way full, you, you open it up and that breaks the vacuum and it'll quit sucking oil up the tube. And then you can, you can be done with this and put the lid on the bottle fill out some paperwork and send it in. Man, I swear to God, I have used, I've used it on every, you know what? Only thing I think that I haven't used it on before I purchased it was a, a, a rideable lawnmower. I swear to God, that's about <laughs> the only thing I haven't used that for. All right. Okay, worst case scenarios, what can an oil sample tell us through flu? Oh, we've went over that. We went over that pretty much. Well, we might have missed some things. Uh, do you think we missed anything about uh, uh, what an oil sample can tell you through fluids? Well, I think uh, one of the things I didn't touch on earlier is that a lot of our customers use this to determine if they can run the oil longer or not. So maybe you're changing oil every 3,000 miles in your car, but you've heard you can go longer. Uh, you can send in a sample, and on the, on the information sheet that we have that, that looks something like this, we've got a question on the back that says, are you interested in extended oil use? And if you hit yes on that, then in the comments we'll say if you, we think you can go longer. Typically on a, on a normal engine, if everything looks good, we'll say, yeah, you can a add 2,000 miles to your next oil run and check back then. So you can use it to, to really extend out and safely extend out so you know you're not running the oil too long. And uh, so that's a nice thing that, uh, that our reports provide is a good guidance on how long you can run the oil. Okay, now this one's gonna be fun. Can you share a story? <clears throat> Can you share a story of the worst sample that you've ever tested? <laughs> well, we've tested a lot of ugly ones. It's it's hard to pick a, you know, something that might be uh, the worst. Um, I've seen a lot of antifreeze contamination samples that will get in there. Antifreeze gets in and kind of destroys the lubrication of the oil, and mm. so it, it attacks the bearings first and. And so we've seen samples where there's so much metal that you can't hardly believe the engine's running. That, uh, you know, hundreds or thousands of parts per million of, of things like iron, that there's just no way that it can be, that it can be like that. But sure enough, you know, they'll call them up and usually they'll have an idea that something's wrong, but they might not know the extent of what it is. But, um, you know, we've seen a lot of samples that, uh, we do a lot of work with the aircraft industry, piston engine aircraft uh, type engines and, uh, you know, those guys hate it when their engines fail. So it's, 
Uh, it's good to see problems like that. They, it really helps them out. Um, it's hard for me to come up with one uh, top of the <laughs> worst of the worst. I've seen some where uh, in the comments we tell people if this thing was a horse, we'd shoot it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, we can have, uh, have pretty good leeway in what we say in the comments. We don't usually have to break out with stuff like that. Most engines don't look that bad, but uh, we have seen a lot of ugly ones over the years. Okay. How many people do you think you have saved from buying a lemon? Oh, we do. You know, hopefully I'd like to think a lot of them. That's one of those things that's it's hard to tell because people will send in samples on pre-buys and usually we'll... We'll issue a report, but we don't get any follow-up on if they bought it or not, and if everything you know, was okay with the engine if they did buy it. Um, I'd say over the years, we've probably saved you know, maybe a 1,000 or more people from buying vehicles that they've had to do maintenance on right away. Uh, we do a lot of boat uh, pre-purchase inspections, and there's a lot of problems that can come up with boats that you don't necessarily see in, in over, on road vehicles and things like that. And so there's... Uh, you know, it's a really good information. A lot, most of the samples that we see look okay, but when we do see a problem, you can be sure it's there. And uh, yeah, it can save you a lot of time and hassle if you can walk away from something that's just gonna be a money pit. So. Okay, now, um, for the people, I, I'll, I'll type this in at the last minute. Could you explain how the shipping works? I know you guys, like, what I mean by that is, I know you guys do something where, like, if you overnight it, you get, like, priority. Mm -hmm. If you drop it in a mailbox, I think that's, like, a priority. But if you send it regular, how long it takes? Because you kind of give them the, how that works. Sure. So, uh, if you need kits, we send out the kits at no charge. You can get on our website and order kits. We pay for the shipping to you. So the kits themselves are actually free, and when you send them back, we also have, I don't have a, a, an envelope here, but we've now got a prepaid postage mailer. So when you get your sample, you fill out the oil information slip, you'd put it in the bottle like this, and then you would take this and put it in a little Tyvek envelope that's got a prepaid postage mailer and ship it back to us. Now those samples that go through the mail, Usually turnaround time for the mail is about five to six days, business days. If anything is really super hot, like pre-purchase inspections where you're, you really need to know right away, um, those, if you overnight the samples to us, or, or if you drop them off too before 11 o'clock uh, right here in town, we try to get those done the same day. We get them logged in the system, we get them tested through the lab, and we'll write the report and email you that night. So we call that our hot run. So, and, and you did, there's no extra charge other than any extra cost it would take to ship it overnight. Okay, perfect. Uh, this is my last thing I want to ask you. Is there anything you would like to tell the viewers? Well, I, you know, something like this is, it's not, uh, not very expensive and we can tell you an awful lot on the report. Um, it's really interesting what we can see, a lot of the different things that we do and it's worth testing, you know, again, any, any vehicle that you rely on that you need to have that thing running when you need it, uh, it's good to do this at least once a year just to see how everything's going in there. And, um, you know, we can really tell you a lot of information about it and give you good peace of mind. In addition to that, if you've got, when you go to sell your vehicle, if you can give the, the prospective buyer, you know, a couple of these nice reports to say everything looks good on the engine, They'll get a premium. You can get a premium for what you're paying or for what you're char or what you're selling the vehicle for, and it gives them a peace of mind too that they know they're buying a good vehicle as well. So, all right, uh, I know you showed me around the lab before, but this time I want to take a quick break and I want you to be mic'd up and be able to talk to the people about what we're seeing in the lab. Can we do sure. it over one more time? Sure. All right, come on, stay tuned, you guys. We almost. <laughs> Well, this is where all the magic happens. So in our, the main machine that we use of the four standard tests that we do is our, our spectrometer. This is a, a Lehman Labs ICP spectrometer, stands for inductively coupled plasma. And it generates an argon gas plasma right in there. The oil samples get injected into that plasma. When it gets injected, the oils burn completely and the optical side of the machine over here 
will look at what light comes off the plasma and convert that to the elements that it's, that it's looking for. It compares the intensity of the light in the sample to the intensity of the light in the standards that we feed it. And from that, it can tell how much metal is in the oil in the part per million range. All right, for us that speak English. <laughs> <laughs> so what does it exactly do like? Because you lost me, I swear to God, I, I'm kind of lost. So you can tell what elements are present in something by the light that they produce when it burns. So uh, if you've ever seen uh, like campfires, sometimes you can see like green light coming off there if, you, if there's something copper in there. Or it's um, basically the, all the elements when they produce, when they burn, they produce a unique wavelength of light. And some of the light isn't visible, some of it is. But the, op the machine here can look at the light that's coming off of the plasma and see how bright it is. Okay. And it knows what wavelength corresponds to what element. So when, it, when it's burning, it's producing a wavelength of light. The optical side of the machine looks at that wavelength and sees how bright it is. It says, okay, if I know on, say for the element uh, iron, for example, I know that this intensity is zero parts per million and this other intensity is 100 parts per million. If the sample and if the intensity coming out of the sample is right in the middle, then you know you've got 50 parts per million. Okay. So it's 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 complicated in how it does it, but it's it's really a pretty simple overall process. The spectra uh, spectral exam or, or spectroscopy things like that are things that can um, uh, they work. You can tell what stel or how uh, what elements are in stars and things like that. So it's it's pretty uh, universally used. Uh, and, uh, but it, it works great too. It's, it's, it's pretty amazing what we can see with this. Okay. So um, one of the next tests that we do, I, I touched on this a little bit, is the insolubles test. And uh, this is a centrifuge test. So we'll take five milliliters of oil and mix it with five milliliters of petroleum ether, which is a solvent. We shake it up and heat it up and run it in our centrifuge and then look for the amount of solids that spin out. Uh, these are red, have been spun, but you can't really see the solids in there. But this is what it looks like afterwards. So there, there's normal levels of solids, and then there's problem levels of solids. And so these, these over here are problem levels. And, and that just tells you basically how dirty your oil is. And if uh, your oil is getting too dirty, maybe the oil filter isn't doing the job it should be, or maybe the engine's producing more solids than the oil filter can handle. Okay. So... Okay. So that's one of the, the standard tests. We do um, another one of our main tests is a viscosity test, which is that's what this machine does. And, uh, excuse me, boys. So this test tells us if an oil is a 5W30 or a 1030 or a 1540. And it's a really simple test. Um, you would use a vacuum to draw the oil up. Can you see that? Is it coming through pretty good? Yeah. See going out? So it's a pretty simple test. When the oil gets up to the top line and we start a stopwatch, and then as it, when it goes from that top line down to the bottom line on the tube, then that tells you, we, we enter the times into a spreadsheet and then that tells you what the viscosity is. So okay. another picture of the tube might be a little bit easier to see if it's, here's one line and there's the other. So okay. you're just basically running the oil through a, a fixed orifice and seeing how long it takes to go through there. And that tells you how, you know, how thick or thin an oil is. That's cool. Uh, I'll show you the flashpoint chamber. And so this is our flashpoint test. It's kind of, it's kind of loud in here. Hello. Hi. So these tests, this is our flashpoint machine and these tell us how volatile an oil is. So we take oil and put it in this cup. We'll put in about an ounce of oil. And when these machines are running, they aren't running now, but there'll be a flame out there. And that's a Bunsen burner, basically. We heat the oil up to the point at which the vapors coming off the oil ignite. Uh, we write, enter that into a spreadsheet, and that tells us how, or how volatile an oil is. So if an oil's got a lot of fuel dilution, the flashpoint will be a lot lower than it should be. If it's got water in it, 
when you pour water and oil into a hot cup like that, it'll boil and sizzle and crackle. So that tells us yes or no if water is present. Okay. So pretty simple test. Been around for a long time, and uh, it's nice. It's hard to fool. Yes. We've got uh, we're dumping oils there from past days. So we generate about 500 gallons every six weeks of waste oil. If you need any waste oil, let me know. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm trying. That's why I don't do my own oil changes because uh -huh. I don't know what to do with the waste. Oh yeah, there's a lot in the in the truck, too, for sure. So. Oh yeah, definitely. So all right, well this is the setup. Mm -hmm. This is the lab. Man, I appreciate you, man. Thanks, no bro. Thank you. I enjoyed you. you come out. And I hope you guys learned the bunch. Once again, my man name is Ryan Stark with Blackstone Laboratories. My man.